All right, hey guys, and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to create light maps and uh, shadow maps for games. Now, why would we do this, and what is a shadow map slash light map? Well, I'm just going to call them light maps for the rest of this tutorial instead of saying both, because that can get a bit confusing, and it's a lot. It's definitely a mouthful. So, what we're going to talk about basically is light maps. Light maps are when um, I'll show you a render, and I'll kind of explain it as it renders. So. We can see we have a plane here and there's shadows coming off these objects. Now in games, you sometimes uh, don't want to have a lot of lights or are restricted in number of lights because um, too many lights will take up too much processing power to calculate all the shadows and this can quickly bog down systems, especially older systems. So what do we do to solve this? Well, artists have invented light maps, which is basically when we take these this final render of um, everything that's projected onto this plane and we basically save it as an image. It's really simple and it can really cut down on the amount of render time you'll spend in games because you can render it out here, save it as an image, and all that image um, just has to be loaded into the game and then you don't have to have tons of sun or point lights constantly illuminating the scene and causing more and more lag and limiting the amount of memory you can use, thus ma making your game you know, usually crappier and crappier. So this is really easy to do. It's a simple technique. What we're first going to do is click on this plane. Now we're going to click a new material to it, and um, it doesn't really matter what the material is. I'm just going to turn off the specular and turn the diffuse all the way up to white, and we're just going to render this again to make sure it still looks okay. And you can see it's a little bright, so maybe we'll change the color down a bit to about, you know, 50% gray. So now you can see here we're getting a pretty even um, contrast on it and pretty good color in everywhere. So now what we're going to do is go into the texture settings of this material, and we're going to add a new. Now we're going to add image, and we're going to, before we do anything else, load an image or create one, we're going to uncheck this texture. I'll explain why in a minute when we go to the actual baking, which is the process of saving the image. So we're going to add a new, and we're going to do a 512 by 512 texture. Now, of course, the more and more you increase these numbers, the larger and larger and more high resolution the texture will be the longer the bake time will be as well. So that's something to keep in mind when you're making these. It doesn't matter what the color of the image is, although I prefer black or white, and I usually have alpha check because anything that's not in this is important to have. So I just accidentally did that, but let's change that back. So unclicked out of that. All right, and now we're gonna name it plain underscore light map. Now, this is important. This texture will only be baking of the plane. It will not be baking the monkey or any of these cubes here. So, and I'll show you that in a minute, but basically, if you want to have a light map over an object, it needs to be either all the objects in the scene or each object has to have its own individual light map, which can get a bit confusing, but is sometimes necessary. So, we're going to click OK now with there, and you'll see this all popped up here. Our input color space is just going to be sRGB. We're going to leave that as is. We're going to leave everything else blank, and we're going to change the coordinates to UV. Now, we're going to press 7 on our number pads. We're going to press tab to go into edit mode, and we're going to press U and then project from view. Now, if we go into the UV edit image editor and we X out of our render result, you can see we have our plane here. We're going to scale this up a little bit and move it into the corner just to get our maximum amount of space on the image. So basically your UV maps want, are gonna wanna utilize as much space in the image as possible or else you're wasting pixels and your total textures will be lower. Now, what I like to do but is not necessary, baking is usually done with tries and in Blender it's exclusively tries. So if we have a quad mesh, Blender will automatically bake the tries but it will not put them into the image. It does save a little bit of time if you just go ahead and go to Mesh, Faces, and then Triangulate Faces here, or Control-T, and you'll see here we now have two triangles. Now, if we go into UV Image Editor and tab back in, you can see it's already updated the UV map accordingly, so we don't even have to worry about repositioning that. Now you'll see here the image is tries, and we're going to select our UV map. Then we're going to just leave this as it is, but you have to remember that this texture has to not be affecting the overall material. Now we go to um, our main scene panel and then we're going to go up here in our outliner and we're going to change it to the UV image editor and we're going to open plain light map so we can see what's going on in the process of baking. Now we're going to go down here where it says bake, we're going to drop that down and you can see there are a bunch of different options in here. Now 
For an example, I'm going to show you the ambient occlusion layer only first. But before I do this, I'm going to show you the rendered result of the ambient occlusion. So if we go render image, you'll see here, we still have our image we had a little bit ago. And now we're going to look at our AO. So this is somewhat what the plane is going to look like with all these ambient occlusion shadows on it when we do this bake now. So all we have to do is with the plane selected and any other objects you want to bake light maps as well, and you simply click bake. We won't have to worry about any of these except for margin. Margin is important and I'll show you what that does in just a minute, but we're gonna go ahead and hit bake. And then see, we, we have no objects or images found to bake to. So what we're gonna have to do is make sure that when you tab into the plane, you're gonna have to make sure that plane light map is selected as the image of the UV. Now, you also have to make sure you save as an image somewhere so that this is saved externally. Although you don't have to do this until after the bake and we're not going to because I don't particularly need this. So we're gonna tab back out now and you can see when we tab back in, it still has plane light map selected and that's really important because that's what it's about to bake to. So now if we press bake, and we go into this view, you'll see it very quickly happen because it's not very many objects and there's not a whole lot of lighting calculations. So you can see here, this is our ambient occlusion pa pass. And if we go into our texture mode, you can see it looks a bit weird. So if we go ahead and do the full render though, and we click bake over here, and then we go shift. And in just a second, you could kind of see there, there was a little bit of triangle missing and that's because it does in fact fill the image as a quad. And you can see here that before, technically the edges should be straight because we're mapping to a plane, but it's rounded. And why is this? Well, this is the margin. And as you can see here, amount of pixels to extend the baked result as a post-process filter. Margin basically makes sure that our UV map, if it's ever edited a little bit, will still contain the original image data. So it just basically takes the edges here and just extends it out one or two, just to make sure that when the texture's loaded in, if it's offset just a little bit by a pixel or two, um, it won't cause unnecessary texture distortions or any kind of weird looking textures. It, and it just helps um, really define our boundaries of our plane here. So you can see here now, if we are to move this to layer two and we go into it, you can quickly see here that all of our shadows are here and this is actually looking quite nice. But of course, if we go over to the other view, these don't have light maps either, which is not something we want. We want to have those to have light maps as well. Well, we could just join all these to the plane, but we want to leave them as individual objects in case we ever want to edit them again. Well, as we did for the plane, you would just do the same thing over here. So for the monkey, we'll go here. And for this one, we're just going to press U Smart UV Project instead of doing anything else. We're going to press OK here. And now you'll see our monkey has been properly made here. We're going to add another new image. This one is going to be quite a bit larger. In fact, it's going to be 2048 by 2048. And now I also have to tell you when you make images, textures, especially with light maps, when you have baking, you're going to want to bake to a texture that has a power of two texture. You don't want to have any textures that's anything less because this will um, create unnecessary memory lag and just it really ruins a lot of the texture. Um, due to scale and distortion and a few other things. And computers really work best with numbers that are at the power of two. That's why megabytes, you know, 1,024 megabytes is one gigabyte and, you know, so on and so forth. So you usually want to stick to when creating textures for most games, power of two textures, but you don't have to. So this is not, you know, necessary. It's just something that will speed up game engine performance. So we're going to name this monkey uh, underscore light map and we're going to press OK. And now you'll see here with our monkey light map, it's on top of our image and it's a bit bigger than the last one, although you can't tell right at the moment. We're gonna go over to add a new material. We're gonna once again, change everything back to the way the other material was, except this time it's going to have the monkey texture instead of anything else. So we're going to add a new texture. We're gonna make sure to disable it. We're gonna go not colors, but we're gonna change this to image. And then we're going to select our monkey light map. We're going to go ahead and press UV map and then select UV map right there. So now everything else can stay as it is, but remember it cannot be enabled when baking. Because if we do, you'll see here, as I'll show you right here as a demonstration, if I click bake now, you'll see here feedback loop detected. And this is because as it's baking to the image, it's also trying to use the image to bake to the image, which creates an infinite loop. And if the computer didn't recognize this would quickly crash Blender. Luckily, they've programmed a little bit of stuff in to help ease that process and uh, prevent memory loops and a lot of crashing by accident. 
So we have that deselected now, and we're going to go ahead and press bake. Now we're going to look at our texture here, and you can see that it's baking, and my computer's getting a little bit slower, both because I'm recording and because this is a fairly high resolution texture. And you can see here, things are quickly filling in, and things are all rendering as tries, even though I did not um, triangulate the faces. So you can see here that Blender does in fact use baking to do the tries. And you could see there, when it finished, it the um, images um, around the pixels, the edges got a bit larger, and that is the margin in effect. So if we go back to previous now, and we move this to layer two, you can see here that um, our monkey is nice and evenly shaded, even though there is actually no lighting here. Although it seems like from far away, there are a lot of cracks on it. This can be easily solved by simply increasing the margins. And if we press tab in, you can see if we zoom in a little bit that not everything is perfectly here. This is also because we have subdivision surfaces on. And if we were to go ahead and subdivide this all the way up, press apply, and then look at it. Now, when we go to the textured view, you can see there are still a few cracks. So we're going to simply turn up the margin to about five. We're going to move this back to layer one. And we're going to rebake this. Now press bake, full render, and we're just going to watch it here and press home. Now, you can also notice that the image is a little bit grainy. This is because I have my ray tracing shadows um, at only five samples, as well as my ambient occlusion only at five samples. So if you want nicer and cleaner images, we would simply have to turn up the samples. This, of course, will also take longer, just as it would if it was rendering. So if we move this to layer two again, we can see that most of our cracks have been solved from close up, but from far away, we're still getting that. Now, this is a problem I found with a lot of texture mapping. Um, mainly, I think this has something to do with the multi-textures, because I'm fairly certain that if we switch our view over to GLSL here, you can see we currently don't have any lighting in the scene. Let's add a hemisphere lighting, and you can see that it's still not looking quite right, and that's because we need to go into the textures and re-enable this. Now you'll see here, as we zoom out, we're still seeing those cracks, but it's not as exaggerated as before. I believe this has something to do with the actual rendering in the viewport, and I don't think that it's actually the texture map itself looks that bad. But you can see here we were able to create a fairly simple and easy light map. So I hope you all learned something from this, and I'll see you all next time.